the current proposal for uh, a plat, which is you know, lacking any creativity, it's the fifth edition of West Long Estates, um, is the 72 acres highlighted here. I think when I spoke with you last during annexation about this, I, I think I might have mentioned 60 roughly acres. Um, what we did is move this western horizon out to this line so we could head off those streets and create a north-south connection and kind of learn from you know what's transpired down here so that we can create that circulation pattern within this plant and, and not be limited to you know beyond our borders. Um, we have worked on a couple different iterations of this um, since we were last before you. That there is a version of the plat that had instead of the large centralized park we had three medium sized parks that opened it up a little bit. Um, ultimately we really preferred the concentration of acreage in one location so that it left us the broadest opportunity to work with the village in designing that park in the future and be able to have a contiguous land base. Um, and if you look at this extension into the southwest corner, you can see where we're reaching towards the school property. You know, I've heard through the grapevine that they're talking perhaps about athletic fields on the northern portion. And our thinking is that we would have a long contiguous green space area that, that would tie up to them. Um, I haven't seen the plan, so I don't know that, but it's something I've heard. <clears throat> this almost one acre park in the northwest corner of 4th Ave to West Lawn uh, had always been planned as, as kind of that southwestern access point. And then we've got, I believe, 800 feet of frontage directly off of Damascus, which is our primary north-south that will run from Cottage Grove Road to Gaston Road and to a large degree parallel bus road over here. I'm sorry, bus road right here. Um, I think I mentioned it during the annexation, but I'll just restate it. We did annex the entirety of the road right away for Bus Road and Gaston Road so that it's within the village's control and authority. Um, it's a little similar to what Madison and Dane County have been going through, I think, with Buckeye Road talking about the future and, and who, you know, takes over responsibility and, and maintains, um, you know, these facilities in the future. And I, I think, you know, that's part of the long-term long -term discussion here. But, you know, and in talking to village staff, we were advised to take the entirety of that right away and make sure that we had control over it. So that, that's the way the annexation was drawn up. So we, you know, we go to the north side of gas and the west side of bus. Um, and I believe the annexation that occurred down there at the intersection of Ammon bus, the village has all of it um, along that Blair property frontage. Not certain about this. I think they have to modify theirs, right? Yeah. Um, the other, you know, the other element of it on a broader context that I want to, you know, bring to your attention is, is again, I'm sure you're all aware, but there's a, a trail and path networking system moving through the Fourth Ad that began down at Cottage Grove Road on the south side of, of BB, and then came up the west side of Damascus and terminated at the property line with the school district middle school. Um, we've now driven that north to this point as well as west to this point on the south side of Morning Dove and east to this point on the south side of Morning Dove extended eastward. As I think you're mostly all aware, these two road connections are <coughs> 25 or 30 feet of pavement short of, and, and one permit, <laughs> short of being a connection. Um, but they're built and they're there um, for that opportunity someday, perhaps. In, in my mind, and, you know, in our design, Morning Dove was always the natural, logical one. It was built as a 36-foot face-to-face, whereas Red Hawk and Pheasant Run are more uh, neighborhood scale at 32 face-to-face. -face. We have the integration of the Chikings at the path crossings and um, providing that safe landing spot for pedestrians, bicyclists, um, runners, whatever, to have a narrow narrowing of the road where, where they cross and it, it kind of brings out a little bit of a here we are to the people that are driving. 
The other thing that um, is slightly different in fifth ad versus what we did in fourth is we, we had some separation of stormwater facilities in this plat. There is um, a consolidation in this area. It's, it's primarily driven by topography. Um, roughly speaking, high to low, like this. Um, 60 some feet of, <coughs> of relief, uh, or I'm sorry, 84 feet of relief, I think, isn't it? Yeah. From about 1,020 down to 936, I think, in this corner. So that's provided us with some, uh, some challenge. At the same time, it's provided an opportunity for us to tear us our way down and, and create exposure possibilities for the, for the lower levels of the homes to be constructed. <coughs> As we move north and west through the acreage, um, there, is, there is a move towards um, density and affordability as we approach ground zero at N and Bus Road. Um, the core right here uh, will be very, very similar to 4th Ad in, in that its location and the history that we've, we've uh, established there and the path we've walked to um, be able to put those kinds of values into the community. Uh, we felt it was important to keep that momentum moving forward. And then as we expand into the neighborhood, there will be places where there's opportunity for us to create some smaller lots, uh, some, some uh, reduced requirements in the deed restriction in terms of footage, as well as moving into different zoning designations and, and provide opportunity for multifamily as we approach that intersection. Um, the master plan is calling for planned mixed use on former Ed Homburg property, um, planned neighborhood on the former Jensen property. And we are by large following, following that there is a little bit of transitioning that occurs, you know, it, it, it's hard to drop it right on the property line. Um, so I think as we move forward into here and here, We'll be making those, you know, those grays, those shades of transition as we move through the project. Um, we met with village staff, had uh, really positive feedback. Um, a couple of small alterations. We had originally had Street 5 as a radius and curve heading out to bus here, and they had asked us to line that up and bring it south. So we reconfigured this intersection. And that provides an opportunity, I think, for potentially some additional frontage here to access what hopefully becomes a large green space corridor. Um, I don't know the exact acreage of Winnicott Park, but it, it's a place that by reference I, you know, I can relate to and I, I kind of see this as a similar type of green space corridor and, and recreational uh, location for the community with the paths interconnecting. The extension of the path um, maybe, I guess maybe I'll take a pause and, and while I've got this image up and before we go. <laughs> Wait, that's not cute. <laughs> before moving to the um, development plan for the 72 acres, if, if anyone had any questions or comments on the neighborhood plan itself, if that's a broader brush stroke uh, document. You know, what we're moving towards is refinement of that fifth ad plat. Um, and beginning preliminary plat level detail uh, for, for that doc next document. How many acres of park is that? I'm sorry? How many acres do you have set aside for those? So fields? there is 14.48, um, I believe it is, in the new acreage, and then I have 0.82 in the established contiguous acreage, 14.46 plus 0.82, so it gets us up to about 15 and a half, just a nudge under 15 and a half. What was that second number? 0.82. And, you know, as I said, I think there's opportunity potentially for expansion southwesterly. Um, obviously, that's not village ownership, but um, as we did over by Taylor Perry School when, when first had West Lawn was platted many years ago in the mid-90s, um, there was a, a cooperative agreement between the village and the school district that established some parameters for how to coexist in that 
25 acres. I, I think is roughly what, you know, just as a point of reference, that North Lawn Park Taylor Crowley School complex is about 25. Um, I frankly envision this with the additional acreage. Oh, I haven't seen it, so I don't know. But you know, we're already pushing 16, so I, I think that it might grow to be more than that 25 in terms of the built-out size of the of the green space. I don't know if you mentioned, but the fields you're showing are more of an illustration of what can fit. No, the, the, the fields, as well as the path locations, are just kind of placeholders to give you a sense of scale. Um, so, that, you know, it, so, for example, we've got a competition level um, soccer field right here. here. Well, if the district decides to build one 700 feet to the west, maybe that, that redundancy makes no sense. And maybe Little League Baseball is not something you really want to continue to build out. I, they're just placeholders to give you a sense of the size of the, of the space. It's, it's a really large space. It's a, a beautiful piece of ground. It's, it's high. It's um, dry. It's um, got nice sight lines off of it. it. You know, it's not somewhere that we're trying to get rid of. It's somewhere that's, you know, frankly difficult to not develop because it's somewhere <coughs> nice as well. Um, you know, the, the slope to the to the east, the 20 is a much more challenging chunk of ground. But we didn't want to shove the, the park over there and have it be that much more displaced from the rest of the neighborhood as we evolve to the north and west. Um, we really wanted to keep this in the context of the greater neighborhood, um, you know, with, with Coyle Highlands, or I'm sorry, Ravenwood here, and Coyle Highlands here, and the 3-5 school there, and you know, the north and west focus, this, this becomes a very centralized location in the, in the context of the larger neighborhood. <clears throat> I guess I jumped right on the other one. Should I skip to the next plan? I, I do have a question. Okay. Um, is that, that showing town roads, the what, metal art, Nightingale, and Brush? Yes, thank you, Melissa. I, I completely forgot that. Um, so if you look at the lighter kind of grayed out underlying, right here is Thrush Lane, this is Nightingale Lane. This is my Lark and the, the cul-de-sac turnaround at the end of it. This is a gentleman's driveway that goes west off that, and another driveway that goes to the east off of there. And uh, it's pretty obvious that, that in this concept plan, we've chosen to not connect those roads. And, and we need to discuss that. We've had that discussion in depth at staff level. Um, I think I've alluded to it before, before this body, but you know, here it is in black and white. This is a loop road. Um, one of the staff comments that came back, we, we eliminated a lot or two uh, in, in this area that would be publicly owned land from there to there. I should stop touching the screen, I'm sorry. And opened this up and provided opportunity for Nightingale to connect in the future if the village decides to do that. It's challenging because of grade. It's about a 10% slope. Um, North Lawn Drive, and um, school road are about 6%, just to give you a sense of, of scale. 10 is generally more than Mike has ever wanted us to build. It's something that could be built if someday the village and the town come to a place where the town would issue a permit. And I'm just going to kind of be that frank about it. We have two roads that have been sitting here for five, six years now that you know we, we discussed connecting. EMS police fire sat at my side on a joint meeting of the village and town board in, in December of 13 and said this needs to be connected and you know it hasn't to this day. So six years later I, I'm just wondering if it makes sense to continue to do that. Um, you know build dead end step roads because there's 150 feet of road here that has to be plowed, maintained, shoveled um, forevermore if once we build it. And so we and, and, and the other thing that's really challenging this, um, certainly with thrush, is the geometry. It kind of has a curve and then it bends and goes this way, and, and it just, there's no good way to bring that over to Damascus. Um, it, it'd be going right through the side of this existing home. 
I don't think there's a lot of push by the town residents to make those connections. In fact, what I experienced with these two was people showing up saying, we don't want that. We've had a nice long dead end street here forever. And we think we don't want that. And I think part of the town's position is driven by that sentiment from the residents that live there. And the analogy I've used is, you know, you've got a, you've got a long dead end with a turnaround that's functioned for 40 plus years as a town subdivision. And I feel like if we propose to connect that road, we'll effectively be swatting the beehive and <coughs> creating a, a, a lot of um, angst. So our proposal is to not make those connections. We'll provide opportunity if, if at some point in time um, things change and, and it can be connected. The, the land space will be there to do that. But we, we now have, through the acquisition of the Jensen property, we now have a clear path to Gaston Road and a clear path to bus. We have circulation. If someday a road were to be connected, frankly, this is the most likely candidate. It's that, that dead end stub is built. The eight foot wide multimodal path is extended to the east property line. And it goes all the way over to Taylor Prairie School. And that was one of the complaints that the people on Morning Dove you know, laid at us six years ago is we don't want those schools connected because then everyone's going to drive by our houses. Um, they wanted the, the town wanted the village to pay to have their roads completely reconstructed wider and different. Right. And that's a good point, Tom. Chris did say, we'll, we'll give you a permit. You just yeah. have to build 2,200 feet of road here for free, which, you know, the math doesn't support that. There's not that much. Uh... Um, so my concern, though, is like with Rush Lane, it just ending at the property. How does the houses look there? So uh, Mike Dolphin, who is a gentleman I grew up with in Monona and I have a good relationship with, lives in that last property. Um, you know, he's got a camper and trailer and stuff that he kind of hangs out with on the end of the road there, and it just works fine, um, for lack of a better explanation. But um, there were some water issues there that we corrected, and this was even before I had acquired this chunk from Mr. Jensen, but. Uh, there was a, a woman down here at the intersection of Thrush and Sandpiper that had some drainage issues, so we buffered up the property line on the tree line here, and I, I actually think we can correct some drainage issues through this plat that will benefit this corner down here in the township right here. Um, this, I mean, it doesn't have the little bump out turnaround militia like Sandpiper does, but, you know, they never built it. There's kind of some gravel there, I think, that Mike uses. What's your concern? Well, that one property will have be up against four properties then. Yes. And, you know, and that, that will occur here against uh, a friend of mine lives here. You know, he's, he's going to have two or three new neighbors, and the gentleman here is going to have four new neighbors. And, you know, this is, uh, you know, reminiscent of some recent history here. Um, but that's the nature of the village growing into existing areas. And I think the response to that is we're putting low density single family housing here. With the incorporation of the park on a gross basis, we're at 1.75 dwelling units to the acre. Now, part of that is driven by, you know, the 15 acres of park. Um, but what we're not proposing is to put multifamily against them. That's, that's why I'm driving north and west. Damn it. Sorry. Oops. <laughs> um, is there is there a tree line buffer then right now? And all that? <laughs> it's coming. There is. And our intention is to save every tree we can. Okay. And that's why we moved this pond upland. Some of our original because the water's gotta get to here and here, these two these sets of culverts that take the water down night meal. And we moved the pond upland to save the tree line because with this steep grade like this coming off the 20 acres down to the town, and, and really what happens, they ran Nightingale and it's so flat that now essentially we have to hinge it and do this to get up that hill uh, without maybe moving a couple hundred thousand yards of dirt to try to take the hill down, which isn't reasonable. Um, but the gentleman who lives right in here, you know, he wanted to buy an acre and a half from me so he could buy the trees. 
because he wanted this tree to save. Well, every fence line tree that I can save, I save. I walk the property lines, I identify what the species are, if it's a nice cherry or, or you know, a hackberry, let them live. If they're a little deformed, that's okay, they never got pruned. If it's a female box elder that attracts the bugs, we're less prone to leave it up because now there's a million box elder bugs in the house right there. But our objective is not to take down trees. And to build that pond here and here, which was our original thinking, we would have had to have elevated that eastern berm to create a level containment for the volume that you know, would have infuriated these people. With, with this transitioning, and that's why we made these lots a little deeper, I think they're 170 deep, so that we, we could take some of that grade down to the east. Andrew, any discussion with the existing three roads in the school and thoughts on how to transition those? It's a great question. <laughs> um, yes, I do. They're, they're my personal thoughts. Um, but there are a couple ways to do it, I guess. Street 5 could run straight north-south and down through the Blair property and connect with Fundamental and be a north-south corridor from Gaston to Cottage Grove Road. So then you'd have Bus, Street 5, Fundamental, Damascus, Sandpiper as your north-souths. Um, it doesn't have to. I guess it becomes a decision for you in terms of how many is necessary. Um, can we live with Bus in Damascus or do we want another one on a quarter mile spacing versus these two and something slightly less than a half mile spacing. <clears throat> if the answer to that question is no, we don't need it every quarter mile, we can do it at a half mile, you could put a radius on Red Hawk, roll it up into Street 5, create about another acre here, get that from the school district to be part of the parkland area, and have a really nice long frontage of park frontage in that southwest corner and just roll it around to the north and connect them. What would if, you do with the other two then? Um, Pheasant Run would have to do the same thing and roll down to Fundamental. And as I said earlier, if you're going to run one, it's going to be Morning Dove because it's the wider street and it's got the eight foot wide asphalt path on the south side of it. So it's the logical one to extend to, to, uh, to bus and a field. <coughs> Back to paper and foam board here, but this was the neighborhood plan in an earlier state back when we did fourth ad, so this is five, six years ago, the thought process that we had. But Morning Dove Drive West, so fourth ad to West Lawn School property, Morning Dove Drive West to bus lining up with Lane Street in Nondal Heights to create a T a cross intersection here, pretty much mid 40 on bus road. That, that was kind of the thinking from a number of years ago. And, you know, we had this up into a terminus anyhow, so, you know, it, I, I didn't feel it was a necessity because now in the new plan, this cul-de-sac's gone, we have two access points to bus coming through that upper 40, upper 80. Here, here. The other thing I'd like to, to point out is purposely the, the properties all along bus road are oriented north, north south so that they get access from side streets. So we're not proposing to have driveways coming out on the bus road up and down the street, which you know is the case here um, in Nando. In terms of the path, I think there's some some uh, consideration that should be given in terms of how we continue with the on-street uh, versus a four wide asphalt multimodal in lieu of a five foot concrete, which is what we've been doing south side of Morning Dove, west side of Damascus. I've identified it here as going up as far as the center of the large park. Um, it could potentially go to this point. From there north, 
I think there's some merit in giving consideration to on street for that path versus putting it in the right of way but in lieu of the five foot concrete. While we're building these homes, uh, maintenance of that path is really difficult. We have to bridge it so that the builders and their subs don't destroy it. There gets to be an issue, and, and this is probably the greater one, of maintenance. The agreement is that either Hamburg or the village maintains that where it's there in lieu of the sidewalk. Um, where if we had a five foot concrete sidewalk there, the, the property owner maintains it. We don't have to send village staff or my people out to plow and maintain that path that's there in, the, in place of the sidewalk. So we've driven it north that far, ground through you know, the challenges that presented themselves in this quarter mile. But now from this point north, I think it still makes sense to stay where, where we were because that's where it is. It was, you know, the, the issue was kind of handed to us because the district had it to right here through their property. And we've driven it a quarter mile up, and now the question is, do you go another half mile with it like that, or do you get to the park, which is the, the great magnet, and then think about some, something different. There's a 70-foot right away on Damascus, so there's room if we choose to. The, the, really, the thing that it begins to affect is parking, and whether you allow on-street parking or not in conjunction with that, if it's a outboard path versus an inboard path. And you can look at Madison and Sun Prairie and a dozen different communities and everyone struggles with this. Um, I just read an article in the, in the Sun Prairie paper this morning where they were having a conversation about paths and there was, there was division on their planning commission in terms of what direction they wanted to go with it. But I think it's something to think about and to give us some direction on. Andrew, is the agreement you referred to then at towards the bottom, is that the fourth ad to West Lawn agreement? Okay. Right. So within the fourth ad to West Lawn, on the west side of the Damascus Trail, south side of Morning Oak Drive, there's an eight foot wide asphalt path instead of a five foot wide concrete sidewalk. And the agreement between the village and Hamburg is that we maintain it until the village accepts, fi takes final acceptance of that infrastructure, and then the village maintains it from that point forward. The interior paths that connect these open spaces, connect the pocket park, connect the big park, those are different because that's, that's within the neighborhood. They're not in the right of way. And I think that's a good distinction and a, a good place for me to maybe move to the next drawing. We are seeing municipalities for interior paths through neighborhoods simply putting up signs that say no winter maintenance. It doesn't mean they can't be used. It's just setting expectation that they're not going to be, that the inside interior paths aren't going to be Plow. The other thing that we're doing this time, because we're trying to learn from the past, is I had created easements in fourth end between homes, uh, 20 foot or 25 foot wide easements, but fee simple ownership went to the center of the path and the homeowner owns half that path, but the public and the village have rights vested in it via the easement. In this plan, specifically and beyond, as we develop beyond this 70 acres, 72, um, we are calling out for 20-foot wide outlots that would be deeded to the village, owned by the village, and then there is no debate about who owns it and who controls it. Because I had a homeowner this winter tell me, if you're not going to shovel my path, then we need to start having a conversation about tearing it off my property. And I thought, well, gee, isn't this going badly? Um, my solution was to go get a barricade and put it there just to emphasize the point that the path was closed for the winter. And a lot of folks do that. They just, like Matt said, they close them down for the winter. Well, well I was saying they actually don't close them down. They just put a sign up that says no winter maintenance. But they can still be utilized if someone wants to snowshoe or do whatever they want to do. Right, because I had a homeowner, very nice, across the street that maintained it, kept it clear, allowed the kids to get up to the middle pond and go ice skating, and it worked beautiful. But if it's on a 20-foot wide outlaw, then we know we have control. It's, it's, it's the villages. So you get to decide. So your current paths are owned by the homeowner, basically, is that what you're saying, or it's owned by the Yes, owner? the interior paths. The, the ones that are in the right of way that are on Damascus and Morning Dove are owned by the village because they're within the right of way. But the, these, these interior connections, so you know, from public property to public property, we had an easement 150 feet long and 20 or 25 feet wide. Ownership went to the center line of that path. What we're proposing now, make that an outlaw, deed it to the village, 
via recording of the plaque. It's a dedication, just like a street right away or a park. And then connectivity becomes <coughs> fully within your control and domain. And that's our proposal as an improvement to what we did five, six years ago. This is a development summary for what would be the fifth edition of West Atlanta State. So the hatch line here identifies where the preliminary plat would run. Close the loop to here. 125 single family housing units, um, roughly 15 acres of park, 2.33 acre primary pond, and um, loop road to the east, connectivity via Street 4 and Damascus in the north, south, east, west. Again, this is kind of where I was saying that could roll up, or it could do something different, or it could go all the way down and header it off. There are some options. How many phases? I'm not to phasing plan yet, Lee, but you know our goal and objective <coughs> would be to build the first phase as rapidly as possible. I'd, I'd like to be moving dirt tomorrow. And we're positioned to do that. <coughs> the drive would be north on Damascus, and then to Street 3, this back property line here would define the limits of the phase. It gives us, like I said, 800 feet of frontage along Damascus. Um, so we can get this opportunity there and available so the village can start planning and budgeting. And, you know, looking towards putting infrastructure and improvements into, you know, what is a very, very um, heavily populated village location. You know, there's a whole lot of folks that live in this area and are going to live in this area, and you know, we need to be get an opportunity there so that we can be thinking out, planning out for that build up. Like I said, all of these little squares and circles are placeholders and, you know, giving you dimension and, and scale. Stormwater management, infiltration, smaller stormwater management, the water flows split and go down both sides of Nightingale. Small lift station would service everything from here to the east. Again, because of grade, we've been fighting rock and depth and everything else and holding the pipe as deep as we can to this point and to this point. But the reality is when there's 86 feet of relief, at some point your pipe comes right out of the ground. So we've, we've been talking to staff and MSA about the, the planning and concept of a, of a lift station here and, and JJ and his staff and that's something that, that uh, you know, we'll be moving forward with as part of this. That would be east of this line roughly, and so our drive in terms of phasing is here. Going here to get to the park, utilize the pipe we have while we plan this, and drive towards that connectivity north and west. Any other questions for Andrew? Um, one last thing. It's just so part of this plat, then you have no multifamily, and it's all single family. The um, line of demarcation for the planned neighborhood versus planned mixed use would be this line. The planned mixed use in the master plan is there, and the planned neighborhood is here. You know, this is where I kind of was alluding to gray zone where potentially there could be some transitioning, and I, I would see possibly the north side of Street 4 or the west side of Street 5 as, as somewhere we could. It feels a little bit like trying to shoebox it. Um, to me, I, I think those opportunities present themselves in a better fashion as we move north and west. So our proposal at this juncture now we have downsized some of the lots. If you look at you know an eleven thousand square foot lot, which was, was not always my go-to, that is getting down to the scale and scope of North Lawn and First Avenue North Lawn, just slightly larger than that. And my brother Chris and I have a meeting with our lead engineer tomorrow morning, hope, hoping that you know this is something that you guys like to move towards specific design of the preliminary plat and the plan and profile for the for the plan documents. Um, given that there's no reconfiguration of the X's and Y's here. Um, 
And we could tighten spacing, potentially provide some opportunity maybe there, there, or here. Your ordinance will allow as little narrow as an 80 by 125, 10,000 square foot lot under the standard SR4 zoning code. Um, that, would, that would be the range of, of lot size to go from 10 to 15,000. To go beneath that 10, I think we'd have to create a PUD designation somewhere. We did that in North Lawn first ad just to get down to a 75 wide frontage, and then that allowed us a 125 to 130 depth so that we could still have living space behind the homes but just narrow it this way on the frontage. It's all relative. There are 37 foot wide lots across the street from us on North Lawn <coughs> Street. Um, I, I don't see a place here for that, frankly. I think there's other opportunities that we have, um, specifically that we have within the village that we maybe could do something denser and much more affordable. Um, but I don't, I don't see it in Fifth Ave right now, I guess. But there, there will be some subtle, subtle uh, constriction uh, getting off the 90 line. You know, we won't have that everywhere. I'm going to try to get down 85 and 80 where I can in a few spots. Which, it's, it's crazy, but it makes a big difference, five or 10 feet of, of width in terms of what people are trying to get on there for their, their homes. So I'm gonna be that guy. <coughs> we have, you have another meeting in 20 minutes. And we have another presentation. We yeah. still need to get through the next presentation. I think there's a ton of work going on here, and I think there's a ton of questions that could be asked, and a ton of answers that could be given. Um, I know we have a little time as well, so. Okay. Anything else for Andrew? All right. This is uh, <laughs> the first of many. <laughs> I'm sure. Thank you for your time. Yeah. yeah. If anyone has questions or commentary, you know how to reach me. All right. Then we'll go back to. I don't to <laughs> Andrew, would you just rip it up? It's not a Mac. If you're going to do more demonstrations, will you just sign a waiver? I don't want you to fall in it. Yes. I'm mad. Chris understands where I'm going. I'm really sorry I said oops. All right. All right. Uh, item six is discuss and consider petition for direct annexation and unanimous consent from the uh, Cottage Grove Business Development LLC annexation of approximately 63 acres from the town of Sun Prairie into the village of Cottage Grove. This is a... Uh, we <laughs> have Pat and Rizzo here from Grey Wolf. If you have any questions uh, for them, Grey Wolf basically gives the Cottage Grove Business Development LLC. That's just the entity that owns the land. Uh, so this is the former Dushak property north of Highway TT. We've been in the spring town of San Jose. As you may be aware, when there's an annexation, we send it into the state and they have 20 days to give us a review letter. Uh, today was the 20th day and they sent it today. So if you have that letter uh, in front of you along with an uh, updated explanation of what uh, their letter said. Um, you notice on the map of the annexation, this does create a small town island uh, with the TV station on the corner of NTT and one residential parcel to the north of that. Uh, because of that island, um, the state said that it was not in the public interest, but they also pointed out um, it's not something that the town can challenge. They can only challenge whether uh, the territory is contiguous to the village or not. And they also said in their letter that it is. Um, so based on that, we recommend approval. Um, a couple of conditions. There were uh, a couple of minor edits to the scale map and legal description that the state asked for. Um, we'll have to amend section two of the ordinance just to update uh, the information uh, that came from the state. Um, and I stuck in a third one just to make sure that we is on board with recommending this to the So, second. 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 We got a first and second with the conditions. Any further discussion? I have a question. I guess. Okay. So on the map from from 
the other annotations and stuff, looking at the map that was in the packet, right, where the island is, it looks like we have both sides of the road of N, although I think it's a county road. Um, to the north of that, it looks like now we don't have the full side size of the road, the full road. Is that the plan, not to have the whole road up there? Um, um, I don't know if there's a way if I can put the thing up there or not, but. Further discussion. I just want to know here, what was it that you put in so that I would be comfortable? Um, December recommending approval of the state. Oh, the state yeah. Yeah. And the state review is not, uh, it, it doesn't, if they say it's not in the best interest, it doesn't mean that um, we can't approve it. It's, it's a recommendation. It doesn't even mean they think it's a bad idea. It means within the very narrow right. scope at which they have to look at the statutes. It doesn't quite mean that. Um, I also talked to one of the board members from the town, and um, he said they weren't necessarily against it either. They recognized the island was there, but there were also some benefits to them keeping that property for tax purposes. That was the town of Sun Prairie? Yes. Yeah. Um, so would Lee be amending section two or would that be going to ordinance committee? Um, it's just something we would edit before we finalize it. Yeah, it's not really it's not really an ordinance change per se, but we'll we'll take care of it. Okay. All right. Any further discussion then? Having heard none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Anybody abstain? Aye. Motion carries. Uh, item eight, we kind of bounce around here. Sorry for that. But item eight is comments from commission members. Any comments? No comment. Kyle? No comment. Alex? No comment. Jennifer? No comment. Melissa? Uh, I forgot last time that you were doing my commission, so let's go. Oh, thank you. <laughs> and, uh, no, none from Fred. Uh, item nine is future agenda items. Suspects, I think. Uh, there will definitely be some, but mostly I just want to thank everyone for coming out tonight. This will keep everyone moving and making yeah. progress here. So. All right, item 10 then. Motion to adjourn. Okay, wait, at least you get to figure out that one. Did you get? Motion hey. by Fred, second by Melissa, I think. No. Or Jennifer. Jennifer, thank you. All those non debatable, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries.